welcome to today's topic on how high quality graphics can transform your marketing. I am here with one of my favorite humans in all the land, Megan Taylor. So I would love to do a quick introduction. If you are here, say hi in the comments. Let us know where you're tuning in from. And if you could greet that, if you could grant StreamYard access right above my name, I'd love to be able to see your face and your name pop up. Hi, Kieran. Kieran says she's so excited for this. Two of my fave people. Oh, okay. Without further ado, I feel like I need another drum roll. <laughs> <laughs> Megan Taylor is a brilliant copywriter who helps female online entrepreneurs find the right words to authentically connect with and sell to their dream clients with ease so they can build a thriving business that brings them joy, stability, and purpose. Megan has helped dozens of solopreneurs, creative teams, and small businesses find joy, meaning, and long-term success through powerful story-led story brands that drive real connection. I'm really falling over my words today. <laughs> But beyond being a copywriter and marketing whiz, Megan is extra special to me because she is the copywriter for Nicolette Styles, And she has done such a beautiful job of helping me get crystal clear on my marketing strategy and find the right words to communicate my big dreams. Basically, Megan is a brilliant, badass business owner. <laughs> she, of course, is passionate about using words to encourage people to take action. But if you take one look at her website and social media, it's clear that she also knows how important having the right visuals are. So thank you for joining me today. Oh, thanks for having me. What an intro. That's I know. Whenever people introduce me, I'm like, is that me? <laughs> yeah, like, who, who are you talking about? That can't be me. <laughs> it's like when someone else introduces me it always sounds way better than when i introduce myself <laughs> right, right that's the power of copywriting <laughs> i know okay so before we jump into talking about how graphics can affect your marketing i want us to talk a little bit about your brand so okay. i know you are changing things up which you like to do um can you tell me a bit more about what's caused your most recent rebrand for your visuals Absolutely. I mean, so I've been in business since 2016. And for the first, what, that's like four years, four and a half years of my business, everything to do with my branding was always DIY. And I always kind of felt like I was just taking bits and pieces from brands that I admired and, and people that I admired and stuff like that. And just, you know, it, it worked and it meshed together, but it never felt like it was really authentically me. It was just bits and pieces of everything I was inspired by. And so I finally kind of, after about four and a half years, reached a place in my business where it's like, okay, no, I know who I am. I know the impact I wanna have. I know what my brand means and, and how I wanna put my face forward in the world. And so I finally was like, okay, I need to stop DIYing this and look to a pro because I know when people work with me for copywriting, it's like that outside perspective. Sometimes when you look at it, you can bring this fresh angle to it and, and bring it to life in a way that you can't do on your own. And so I was like, okay, I know from working with Nicolette <laughs> that designers can do that too. Um, so yeah, it just finally felt like time to invest, make that investment in my business. Yeah, I love that so much. Uh, and you said, I finally knew who I am. So tell me a bit more about that. How did you know who you are and how did you feel like that was starting to be like represented in like the colors you were choosing and how you chose to like show up visually? I think it came from just knowing, like first and foremost, knowing what my business was all about and what my vision was and how I want to actually serve and help people and really getting clear on, okay, this is what makes me different from other copywriters, other messaging experts, other marketing pros in this sphere. There's certain things that I value and that I believe in. And I always say like, marketing is something that should feel really intentional and really aligned and you shouldn't do things just for the sake of doing them and it took me a while to figure out that that's what I, I wanted to do and that's what my message was and I think like your message and the branding that you choose the visual branding that you choose they have so much 
overlap and they need to have that overlap in order for it to be consistent and for you to attract the right clients and the right audience for your offers. And so wanting to bring that cozy, intentional, like slow morning kind of feel into my branding so that people kind of feel that like just from that very first impression, because like words are so important, but at the end of the day, our first impression is coming from visuals and not words. Yeah, oh, for sure. I was even saying to Megan, I chose this sweater because this color reminds me of Megan, you know, like cozy and coffee and being like, this is how I wanted our conversation to be because this is just how our conversations do go. But what I love about what you're saying is the vision the mission the values because i feel like when we do branding work people are like i know what those are Mm -hmm. Um, and then i'm like okay but what are those and then people sometimes feel frustrated because like i've already done that i want to know what my colors are and what my fonts are but every business decision you make does stem from your vision and your mission and your values and it changes i mean think about how often you've changed and this is what i admire about you you've changed and evolved a lot every like few months you do it but it never looks like okay wow now she's going from warm tones to like hot pink like it's always subtle but your Mm -hmm. undertone and those those values still is the same even though you and your business is growing and evolving so much too and I think it's so important because otherwise I also feel like you can get caught up in trends. And so that was really important for me. It was like, am I wanting like a more neutral color palette and like these more feminine polished fonts and stuff because that's what everybody else is doing? Or is it because that's actually truly who I am? And so it comes from reconnecting with those things. And again, like the vision and the values and everything. Otherwise, yeah, it, it's... I call it brand soul searching. Like you really yeah. need to figure out who who you are. And, and then when working with the same person, or you can DIY it, but like it, it's that process that really helps that come through, but you really need to reconnect with it to make it happen. Yeah. Oh, 100%. And I think that's so important because there's so much noise out here. And so I often say to people like you can like page through magazines, try not to be online to see what everybody else is doing or look in your house, look in your office, what are colors that you are naturally attracted to? Like if you go to anthropology and you buy a candle or a sweater at Maywell, what color are you more likely to take? Mm -hmm. Because that's starting to tell you a lot more about the kind of colors that you are naturally drawn to and that maybe ties in with those brand words and values and things like that. So I think it's good to like, you know, put your blinkers on and try not to see what others are doing Mm -hmm. um, when you're doing this work. But I think too, when you can get really clear on your mission and your vision, and then that's easier to start being like, based on those words, what are those key feelings that I want my brand to represent? So I love that. And this is why I said too, like in our training is like, take a break from it Mm -hmm. and then come back with fresh eyes and be like, oh, okay, no, I'm actually pinning that because I've just been seeing that everywhere and it's beautiful but doesn't represent me and my brand and where I'm taking my business. Totally. So, I love that. Okay, so we've already established that your brand is beautiful um, and you've always DIYed and you've finally now started working with a designer on your logo. Mm-hmm. What do you feel has made you ready to get help with your logo? Um, it was a mixture of things, just just the way that my brand had evolved and and. I didn't want my brand to be a mix match representation of all of my influences because my business is no longer a mixed match influence. Like that was part of my journey and I honor that. And I think it's so important to look to influences and inspiration and people you admire, but I no longer have offers that like, I I offer this because this person offers it or this person told me I should offer it. It's everything kind of just feels more put together, more cohesive, more me. And so I knew I needed a logo that was going to kind of encapsulate all that. Now that I know who I am, how am I going to put my my face forward? And really like your logo is that, right? You have your headshots and your profile photos and whatever, but your logo is also just such a representation of who you are and who you're going to attract and what, what the vibe is of working with you. And so I know that there are so many 
there's going to be a ripple effect of me updating my logo, right? I'm going to look more polished and I might be able to increase my rates and I'm going to be able to attract a different kind of client and stuff like that. But at its core, it was more like I need to show up as me. Does that make sense? Oh, for sure. And I love, I think 100% when you invest in your brand and it doesn't matter whether you hire a designer Mm -hmm. or you know you invest in templates it does have that ripple effect and i think that's so beautifully said and so when you with this logo does this because megan also has a shop so Mm -hmm. one of the fun things that we always talk about is our business is in our shop does the shop have a different logo then yes and it it does but what what i love about when i'm on your website and i click through to your shop it still feels oh my mouse is now all of a sudden decided not to work so we'll charge that um it feels like it's still the same person but i'm definitely in a different place and i love that like i know you've thought through that and did that intentionally too Mm -hmm. there's a lot of strategy there because my coach and i were talking about it and it was like okay people who are coming to the copy template shop are they coming here just because they want to learn how to write copy or do they want to learn how to write copy from megan taylor and we realized that was the difference right because there are so many copywriters out there you can get templates for free off pinterest and stuff like that too but the reason people buy from me is because they appreciate my approach to sales and my approach to marketing and the fact that i don't like the hustle and I think everything should be ease and flow and you need elements of storytelling in your copy to really, I I believe in, you know, having that connection with your reader first before you try and sell to them. And so because of that, I knew I needed the branding for the copy template shop to really be reflective of my branding. Because if you land on my website and you can't maybe afford to work with me one-on-one, but you still want to learn how to write copy from me, you can go to the shop and you still know that you're kind of getting that Megan experience, right? And I I pour that into my products and I knew that my branding needed to reflect that if I wanted people to know that I pour that same kind of love and attention into my products. Mm -hmm. And you really do. Your products are amazing. And what I love and what I say to people who are considering is that you can't help and work with everyone but you never know who's searching and who has that problem like in the middle of the night Mm -hmm. searching for how to write better Instagram captions or your new product that we will get to. Mm -hmm. And then they can find that product and you know, you're able to help help them right then and there without Mm -hmm. them to book a call with you. So I love that. Um, So I've already touched and another thing that Megan does really well is if you scroll through her Instagram, her website, her emails, everything looks cohesive and beautiful and everything feels intentional. I know that with Megan, she would rather not do it if she can't do it with intention. And so everything she does, there's a reason behind that. And I love that so much. Um, Not so much that it has to be perfect, but Mm -hmm. I know for you, it's an experience, right? So um would you say or when how important has high quality visuals been for you oh so important so important it's it (laughs) it's the bane of a copywriter's existence but the truth is is your visuals do make that first impression nobody is going to read your copy and get to know you and your business if you haven't grabbed their attention first and so having Instagram graphics that actually make people like look at it and say, oh, wow, I really I wanted to know more about this. Like you need to grab their attention first or they're not going to read the caption. You your website needs to have like a general impression of, okay, this is a professional person that I trust with my money. And like your visuals have such a key component to that. Right. So if I didn't have polished graphics, I really don't think I'd be where I am now in my business. And the templates have helped with that tremendously. (laughs) Yay. I think you've said too, like your visuals are what um, draw people's attention, but your copy is what draws them in to stay. Did you say something along those lines, which I really liked? That's absolutely true. It's, you know, like you, your eye is always going to be caught by the pretty shiny thing in front of you first. And it's, it's just the truth. But then once you hook their attention, it's copywriting that has the power to take that attention and turn it into something deeper, like a relationship and a connection. Yeah. 
For sure. Yeah, I think it's human nature for us to be drawn to things looking beautiful and aesthetically pleasing. Um, Megan is also a data person. Which I <laughs> love how geeky she gets about that. So have you noticed anything specifically with your engagement, your reach and your conversions when you started putting more time into the visual side of your business? Absolutely. Especially I would say Instagram is probably the biggest um, difference that I've seen there um, just because that's one of the only platforms I use. I'm not big on Facebook or Pinterest. I always, you taught me like pick one platform and, and go, go crazy at it. And then when you're comfortable with that, you can move on to something else. And so I pour a lot of love and attention into my Instagram and like my following has just gone through the, like, I mean, I don't have like 10,000 followers, but there's a good <laughs> between like 300 and like over a thousand but yeah. it, it's not even so much like vanity metrics like that you're right it's the engagement because I I really try and use my Instagram as a place to provide free value to people because I think copywriting is so important and it benefits everybody so I wouldn't be able to have that kind of impact on my audience if it wasn't for my visuals. And so people are, you know, they're drawn by that attractive visual and then they go in, on to learn more. And I get a lot of feedback. I get shares. I get say like my saves. I don't know why people save half the things that they do, but they do. And so, yeah, I've absolutely seen a huge uptake in my engagement. I know why they save it because you're amazing. Oh, thanks. And I think like it's it's not a lot of numbers but it's quality people right mm -hmm. it's the right kind of um followers that follow you engage with you um yeah and that makes all the difference and i feel like you use instagram really well to like walk your talk and show and be the example of what you teach as well um in terms of how to share your story how to show up how to tie everything in together. So I love that so much. You do a great job with that. Okay, let's talk about Canva templates. So mm -hmm. I'm also so honored because Megan actually uses a lot of our templates in her own business. I know she's used it before for Facebook ads and for challenges and more recently for a shop update. So um, can you share some of the reasons why you have started using Canva templates? I mean, I didn't even know Canva templates were a thing for <laughs> the first like two and a half years of my business, basically until I met you. Um, and it changed my world. Like it, it rocked my world. It really did because I, I like to think that I have an eye for design and I will gladly play around in Canva for hours. Like it, it is something that brings me a lot of joy. Um, I love designing things from scratch, but I always need to have that inspiration, something to look to. I'll see like a Facebook ad that catches my eye and then I try and like recreate it. But as my business grew, um, my time just became too valuable to do that. I'll still play around in Canva because it's something that brings me joy, but it was like, okay, I can spend three hours DIYing this Facebook ad from scratch and looking at inspiration and whatever, or I can use a template and have it done in like 15 minutes and put it up. And like also just the confidence of knowing, you know, even when you have like an eye for design, you think, okay, this looks good, but you never know for sure. But knowing that it has been professionally designed and then you're just putting your own content and your brand into it, it's like, okay, I'm confident that this is actually going to be attractive to other people. It's going to stand out in the feed. It's going to convert for me, especially when you're, you're, doing things like sales, like Facebook ads, like a free challenge or a lead magnet where you're trying to really qualify those leads for your business. It's so important to know that it's going to convert. So it, it saves me so much time, but it also gives me that confidence as well that it's going to work for me. Right. Well, and I think it's fun to do that with one or two graphics too. But then when you are running a challenge, like there's a whole host of images that you have to think of for your challenge and then also during your challenge promoting your challenge so it's true that maybe that's not the best use of the time is to create everything from scratch and that's when it's nice to have a backup um when it's big like that it also needs to be cohesive right so when you're using right. templates normally it's not just especially with the canva template shop it's not just oh here is a instagram 
template that you can use because you can get like a free Instagram template, but then it's like, okay, what if I want my workbook to match that? And what if I want my stories to match that? It's so like you fall down a rabbit hole of just trying to create something that looks similar, but at yeah. least with templates, you, you know, you normally get, it comes with like a little package and like how you have your collections and it's like, okay, I know that my, like, I just launched a new product today and I know that my shop graphics and my Instagram story graphics and my Instagram feed graphics, they all look the same. They're cohesive. And it's, it's doing a favor to my buyer as well, because they're like, okay, I know I'm in the right place because I recognize this visually. Yeah. I love that you said that because, and this is one of the big difference when people are like, oh, can I just get the templates off of Canva? Because Canva has templates versus mm -hmm. the Canva template shop or the membership. But what is different is that we're showing you how by following a collection, you can see how whether it's a challenge or your Facebook group or your emails, we are showing you how it all matches and works together within that collection, like it were a brand, right? Mm -hmm. So you can see, oh, okay, the dots connect, this is how it works. And then you can start getting, you can either choose that collection. And then sometimes I feel like, and were you maybe scared that if you're like, if I choose Eva, um, everybody, I'm going to look like everybody else, maybe that chooses Eva too. Or what if I now all of a sudden like this thing over here from this collection, like mm -hmm. am I going to mess it up? Well, I have used, I used to use like the Olivia Rose collection a lot. Um, I started using the Alyssa because that's where the shop graphics are and everything. And it's always a worry, right? It's always a worry with templates. And I get the same feedback on copy templates too, right? It's like, well, if I use the same copy template as this person, isn't it just going to sound the same? And it's like, no, because your stories are different. Your content is different. What you're selling is different, right? Like the, the, the messaging pieces that you put in there are different so you can customize it. And it's the same with the Canva templates. It's, you know, the value that you bring. It's not like a, your brand fonts, your colors, your design elements, all of those kinds of little things, but like you can personalize it too. If you use, like, I use a lot of um, coffee elements in my branding. So I can take a template from the Alyssa collection and like where there's a circle, I can replace it with like a coffee stain and it still has that same put together feel, but then it's more me. And it's a customization that takes me two minutes instead of 20 minutes or two hours. Yeah, I love that so much. Okay, so I want to do a little show and tell and show them what you've been working on. Can you tell me a little bit more about your new product, the mm -hmm. Messaging Clarity Journal? For sure. So the Messaging Clarity Journal is um, it's a compilation of messaging prompts that I use with my private one on one clients, including you. It was like the messaging work that we did before we launched your new website copy and stuff like that. And it's here to help business owners who are in a um in a change in their business. They're pivoting, they're niching, they're launching something new, and they just need a little bit of clarity on the things we were just talking about, right? Like your vision that you have, the values, and, and what you actually want to bring to your brand and the impact that you have. And so it's 30 pages of prompts that help you dig into those things, like the exact same messaging work that I do with my retainer clients and my copy VIP day clients. I love that. And I feel like you have such a good way of asking it where it's like, because sometimes these questions are so hard to answer because it's always hard to answer questions about yourself, right? Mm -hmm. But the way that they're framed, it's almost easy to answer. And then you can connect the dots and be like, okay, this is what, you know, the story is here. And now we're getting into the meatiness of it. So I love that. Mm -hmm. So if, if you guys have any questions, let us know. Mm -hmm. I'd love to share my screen and show um, one of the templates in the shop that you've just now recently used. Mm -hmm. and Tell us what you were thinking and how the templates have saved you some time. Totally. Okay. Yes. So on my screen is the shop owner's bundle. So one of the things that the team and I are working on is to be able to support people who want to open up their own Kama template shops in the future. So this is a product we created last year for people who already have something, but they wanted to brand their shop, brand their products and get that out um, and launched faster. So this is what Megan used recently mm -hmm. for her new product, which is also available. Congratulations. It looks Thank amazing. You. Thank you. 
Um, and uh, I mean, it just looks so beautiful. Like I know what the templates look like, but you playing with them and making them your own. I'm like, what? Do we have this in the shop? It's amazing. <laughs> it looks so different. It looks so good. It makes me so happy because that was one of the things is, you know, when I launched the copy template shop last year, um, it was kind of, I was testing things, right? I was like, I know my audience kind of wants this, but is it going to sell? And I put them in there for like dirt cheap <laughs> and was just kind of like, you know, start, start using these and give me feedback and let me know, are they useful for you? And as I started getting more and more feedback on them, I was like, okay, these are awesome. <laughs> These are really great. They have a huge impact for people. Um, and, you know, I started adding more things to the templates so that they have video tradings and stuff like that and increasing the pricing as well. It's like, okay, how do I make sure people know how valuable these are before they use them? And it's graphics, right? Like you can write the best product description, but people want to see what they're getting, especially with digital products. People need to see what they're actually getting. And I can't just open it up and show you the journal, right? I, just, I can't do that because I'm just like, I'm giving it away and you're not going to buy it. And so that's where the shop graphics come in. And so when I was launching this new product, I knew that you had just made these shop templates. And I was like, I need to try this. I need to use them because my old mock-ups just don't, do it justice. You can't see as many pages. You can't see the branding work that's gone into it. And you can't see how much of a polished end product it is. And so these, gra I pulled these together and I kid you not, like 10 minutes. Oh um, my gosh. It was unreal. And then today when I was sharing them on Instagram and everything, it was the exact same thing. It was like, okay, I'm going to drop my little screenshots in. Boom, here's an Instagram post about it. And it was effortless and it looks and so good. Did. And the worksheets too, right? Mm hmm yeah they're stunning and what i love that you said too is that the first time you launched and you've made it better and improved it since and i think that is just such a beautiful way of doing it is like launch it imperfectly you're mm -hmm. going to get feedback you're going to see how you can do it better but you didn't wait for it to be perfect which i love and i think sometimes people are like they cannot launch something until it's perfect but um, or they can only create it once and they never have to touch it again. But I think a really good digital product evolves and you kind of tweak as you learn more about how people are using it. So I love that so much. Uh, and it looks beautiful. Well, thanks. No, I love that you said that because you're doing yourself a disservice when you hold back from launching things, but you're also doing your audience a disservice, right? They need solutions. They need them now. Get it out into the world and you can always improve it. Yeah. I remember one of your first products was the Instagram captions. And I remember looking at it and it was, there was a, a Google Doc and there was also, um, what's the other one that we like that's almost like spreadsheets, but not like spreadsheets? Oh, Airtable. Yes. <laughs> and you had prompts in there. And I was like, oh my gosh, this is amazing. You're undercharging. This is so much value. Um, do you still have that? I do. So it's evolved. And that's exactly what you just said, right? So I, when I first launched the Instagram caption prompts, it was all these things. It was the air table. You could just copy and paste. It had stock images in there for you. It had all of this stuff. And then, so I launched that and then I got feedback from people and the feedback was actually, actually, this is kind of overwhelming. You've actually packed too much into this. And so I peeled it back and now you just get the copy prompts and you get like a little training on here are like the four different types of Instagram captions you can use to drive more connection between you and your audience. But it doesn't have all the fancy bells and whistles that can make it distracting. It's literally just, here's what you need, go do it. And so that's, you know, sometimes as your products evolve, it's not adding things, it's actually taking things away. Yes, I mm -hmm. love that. Um, and we talk a lot about that too, is like give them that quick win, right? Like mm -hmm. the quick thing to take action and make them feel like, accomplish this, I've got it, instead of like overwhelming them more. Because we always think more options. Mm -hmm. um, and that's a good point too, because I think it's easy Oh, and I can frame this as a question for you. It's easy to get into the membership and feel overwhelmed with all the options available. So since you are in there, what would your recommendation be to not be overwhelmed? I would say start with a collection because all of the collections are well-rounded. So it doesn't matter what you want to do. And like, don't freak out. Don't be like, oh, I'm going to pick the Alyssa and then I'm stuck with the Alyssa forever. It's like, no. Right. 
you can make a switch to the Eva and it's still going to look beautiful because <laughs> it's branding and everything. So pick a collection that kind of speaks to you. And like, I know that on the Canva template shop.com, you can go and like, we have descriptive words for each of the templates. And it's like, okay, what actually vibes with your brand and how, just how do you want to show up? How do you want it to look and feel? And then figure out, okay, what is the most important project that I'm working on right now? How is that going to serve my goals? Mm -hmm. So it could be nice to, yeah, completely transform your Instagram feed and start putting out all of these like beautiful graphics using Insta templates. But if you are gearing up for a launch and you need to like your pre-launch, you're in your pre-launch period, maybe a workbook to grow your list is actually what's going to serve you the most right now. So sit back, think about what is your biggest business goal right now? Which template is going to serve you for that goal and start there. And then you can start building it out, right? If you pick an Alyssa ebook, then you can start, you know, once it's ready to go and you need to start sharing it, then you can go to the Alyssa Instagram posts or the Alyssa Facebook posts or whatever and start chatting about it. Yes, 100%. And we've also plugged a quiz in there that helps you find like the focus that you need. So whether that's a platform or list building. So we plug that in there too, which we spend some time to help people with who are like, where do I start? And so it just asks you like, I believe five or six questions and then it gives you a result in terms of focus here. And I love how you said like, then once you're done with that workbook or that one thing, then you look to the next mm -hmm. step in terms of now that I've created this, what is, what's the next piece? So mm -hmm. I love that. Thank you so much. You're so welcome. <laughs> I'm so glad that everybody was able to meet you and that we were able to chat. Me too. Um, we don't have any questions, but, um, I will circle back and see if there are any after. Thank you so much for joining me, my love. Thanks for having me. I'll circle back too. So if anybody has copy related questions, I will gladly pop in and look at them. Oh, I have one more question. Okay. What would you say to anyone who is on the fence about joining the membership? Just do it. <laughs> 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 I mean, no, just absolutely. Like, what if you got to lose, right? Especially because you're offering this really generous monthly option with the founders members rate. What is it? $39. You get in for 39 bucks and you can see for yourself how transformational it is. Like join, do the month, set aside a day next week or something to sit down for like an hour and just start playing around with it. And you're like, as soon as you are in there and you start seeing it and you start playing around with these templates, you're going to see holy crap, this is going to save me so much time. Like you just have to see it for yourself. So just if you're on the fence, take the leap. You really have nothing to lose. So just get in there and start playing around with it. Yay. Yeah. Nothing to lose, everything to gain. Thank you so much, my love. And thank you for tuning in, guys. Bye. Bye.